those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in His divine plan and find strength in His presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with Him. Remain blessed as you listen. The believer can fall out of grace and lose his salvation through idolatry and rebellion. I did disprove last time that the concept of one saved, forever saved is a fallacy. I'm sorry to say it. I wish it were not true, but it is the truth. The concept that once you are saved, you can do anything and nothing else changes it is not accurate. Hallelujah. I love those who brought this perspective to the body of Christ. I honor them. We honor their spiritual investments and that which they have brought to the body of Christ. But as we grow spiritually, there is need to adjust. I was speaking in a pastor's conference yesterday and I was telling them that one of the things we must sustain as men of God is the humility to adjust when greater light is open unto us. It is very embarrassing. There are many things I used to believe. I no longer believe them now. And there are many things I didn't used to believe. I probably would argue with them. But now they have become, they have been incorporated into my belief system. So realize that the life of a believer is a life of consistent repentance and alignment. This is the, this is the symbol. It is the signature that characterizes spiritual growth. That occasionally you will be required to repent and align. The word repent is not an ungodly word. It's not a word for sinners. To repent means to turn from a perspective and begin to see from another view. So we will need to repent and align ourselves. Please let it not embarrass you if in the course of your Christian experience you find the need to adjust. We all have at one point or the other believed certain things about God, about men, about ministry and as the word of God opens up, realize and place your pos yourself in a position where you'd say, I am a student in the school of the spirit. Isaiah, when he saw the Lord, he broke down. There was nothing embarrassing about it. There is still much more for us to see in the spirit. And so if we come around this that has become our experience, then we may never grow. We must sustain the humility to keep aligning. That spiritual alignment is what opens up us to become um, uh, portals for, for kingdom activities. Just like Mike shared, he said, let it be done in the earth, in this body. That this body will become a gate where spiritual things can find expression. Hallelujah. And then the last point we looked at the issue with the carnal nature is that it stops the believer from being a true lampstand and a written epistle in his territory of influence. The Bible tells us again and again that the church and the believer as an individual entity, that we are the light of the world, we are the salt of the earth. That means that our lives are supposed to be spiritual templates, mirrors, vistas for men to be able to see what god's life that the reality of the divine life should be communicated accurately through our lives but if we dwell in that realm of carnality it can tamper with the quality of the 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 reflection of christ through us and so you find out that men will look at us but they will see darkly we will not give an accurate representation the word represent means to present him again represent that we create an accurate portrait of what the divine life is hallelujah i define the word carnal and i told us that to be carnal means to be sensual to be ruled by factors and agencies other than the spirit it doesn't just mean five senses alone every time you are ruled and controlled by an agency that is outside of the holy ghost you are carnal hallelujah 
whatever is the name of that agency if it is outside of the holy ghost it is called carnality so to be carnal is not just to be materialistic necessarily or to be ruled by your five human senses no that every time you subject yourself to an agency to influence and manipulate your life that is other than the spirit of god according to scripture you are called carnal are we blessed and i helped us to define the word flesh in this context and uh, i told us that flesh is not body they are interchanged in scripture like in galatians 2 20 it talks about the flesh but it means our mortal body but flesh in this context has used when the bible is talking about the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh flesh i define it as the way of life i love the definition a way of life that is helplessly subject to the appetites the lusts and the desires of the old man helplessly subject this describes the experience of many believers in the body of christ we are we are helplessly subject seemingly that's the reason why many believers cannot tame certain appetites of the flesh hallelujah according to first john chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17 the bible tells us love not the world we did examine that um, there are three dimensions of of carnality and three levels of being ruled by the flesh we said the first is the lust of the eyes we talked about the word lust lost means an affinity for something when the bible says love not the world it uses the greek word eros and is the word lost to develop an ungodly affinity for a thing hallelujah i told us that there are many words that are used i'm just doing a quick recap for love hallelujah number one is is filio filio is earthly love the love between friends husband and wife the highest dimension of human love hallelujah and then the bible talks to us also that there is um, agape or agape that's the love of god love that is not of this realm hallelujah and then the third level is eros eros is, is immoral love love that is sponsored by lust a demonic ungodly carnal affinity towards certain things and the Bible says, love not the world. Remember the teaching? I'm emphasizing it because we can never have enough of it. Love not the world. The world is eros. Do not develop an ungodly affinity for this system. That means that there are many things in this world that can cause the believer to begin to develop an ungodly affinity. And the Bible categorizes them into three. The first is the lust of the what? The eyes. The lust of the eyes. An affinity that is sponsored by your vision. The things you can see creating an ungodly affinity. When you see a beautiful car, when you see a beautiful lady or a handsome guy, when you see a nice cloth, when you see all of these things, because of your eyes, if the Holy Spirit does not come to play a part to bring you out of that realm of carnality you will find out that you become subject to an affinity that is beyond your power for such kinds of things are you following me now and then the second is the lust of the flesh an affinity that comes because of what your body wants food immorality and all kinds of things that are associated with the flesh and I told us last week that it is good to pay attention to our bodies but not at the expense of our spiritual growth. Gluttony is one proof of carnality. An excessive, um, uncontrollable affinity for food. And this is, um, among many other things, uh, spiritual activities like fasting bring us to a place where food stays in its... Um, designated place in our lives and it doesn't go beyond the boundary hallelujah and then the cravings to satisfy our bodies through whatever means that's what has led people into 
acts like masturbation, acts like um, uh, pornography, and so on and so forth. The, the, that affinity to satisfy our body. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says the pride of life. That human desire to be in control outside of God. That human desire to receive earthly acknowledgement on grounds of our accolades and our fulfillment and achievements in life. It is a natural thing. Our natural disposition places us to be victims of this kind of nature. So we must be able to rise to a plane that is not natural. Hallelujah.